At the beginning of this week, I discovered that I had a little problem in my kitchen that I needed to address. And in order to do that, I needed to abandon the meal plan that I had made for this week and come up with something else. So I thought I would take you through my week vlog style, show you what I'm making and what I'm cooking that helped me tackle this problem in hopes of giving you some ideas or a little inspiration in case you ever find yourself in the same spot. It is Monday and I realized when I opened the refrigerator this morning that I really don't have any business going to the grocery store this week. I had planned to film another video, a cooking video that would require me to visit the grocery store for a few ingredients. And when I saw what the refrigerator looked like, I was like, no, I can't do this. We need to focus on using up what we have. Right now I am just doing a little bit of tidy up and throwing away anything that needs to be thrown away. Fortunately, I haven't come across very much except mostly just like some wrappers and some containers and things that can be thrown out. But one of the things this helps me do is not only take stock of what we have so I can start to make a meal plan or think about meals that I want to throw together, but it can also help me move some things to the forefront so my family sees them. Like this cottage cheese, for instance, it was pushed all the way to the back. And when I put it up here up front, where it's visible, I know that my son is probably gonna reach for that after school as a snack because it's one of his favorites. This right here is my favorite kind of cottage cheese, so I will definitely make sure to snack on that or include that in my meals this week. Will not be hard to finish that up. Unfortunately, these couple of leftover pancakes that I made over the weekend got crushed underneath another container of food, so I think I'm going to have to just dump these out. But the Ziploc bag I will probably toss into my freezer because I can use it for veggie scraps. Okay, I spoke too soon. This nectarine definitely needs to go. It was at the bottom of the package and got bruised and it needs to go in the trash. I can't always save everything. And right here we have a tiny little bit of homemade chocolate chip cookie dough that was left from baking cookies with the kids. I definitely know what to do with this. Mm. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't eat the whole thing right now anyway. But one of the things I do notice that I'm gonna take out because I'm gonna use it to make dinner is this right here. It is some leftover tortellini minestrone, but we are actually going to turn this into something new. We're going to recreate these leftovers, which is one of the secrets to getting people in my household to eat them. This is a tortellini minestrone soup that I actually made for a meatless meals video that I just finished filming a few days ago. And it was very good, but I made the mistake of making it on a night when only a few of us were actually home for dinner. My husband had meetings. Uh, one of my kids was out at an activity. So there were only a few of us eating this. And even though I ate a few more helpings for lunches the next few days, we still have quite a lot of it left. So I'm going to recreate it into like a casserole type thing tonight that we can all eat together. I thought that I would just use some plain pasta, just cook up a few ounces of plain pasta to throw in here. But then I remembered that I actually only used half the bag of tortellini to make the soup. This was like a 20 ounce bag, 22 ounces. So I'm actually just going to stir in the rest of the tortellini from the bag. Since this was a soup, um, it has plenty of sauce. It actually was broth. It was a little more brothy when it was a soup and it's kind of thickened up as it has sat in the refrigerator for a few days. So this will be plenty of sauce for the uh, tortellini bake. Plus it's got some veggies and some beans and stuff in there, so it'll be good. I wish I had some mozzarella or something to put in here, but all I have is cheddar, and one of them is like a sour cream and onion cheddar, like a chive, chive and onion cheddar that I got for a charcuterie board for a brunch that I hosted last week. So I thought that I would use that up and then just a little bit of just regular sharp cheddar. So I'm gonna stir this all together. I'm gonna pop it in the oven at 350 until it's heated through and bubbly. will probably take about 30 or so minutes. Ooh, bay leaf left over from the soup. I'm actually gonna add just a little bit of crushed red pepper to this as well, just to give it a little bit of a kick. And I feel like it's just a little bit dry, so I'm going to pour in about a third to half a cup of water. The other thing I have left over from my meatless meals video last week are a few Brussels sprouts. So I'm just gonna clean those and slice them. I'm gonna just slice them in half and I'm gonna roast those along with the tortellini bake. Um, just on a sheet pan, a foil lined sheet pan with a little olive oil and some seasonings. Probably just use like an all purpose seasoning or something for that. And that should be dinner tonight. It is Tuesday and Tuesdays are 
horribly busier than any other day of the week for us. So I really need to come up with a meal that we can eat in shifts, meaning everybody can fix it for themselves whenever they happen to be home over the course of the evening. And I think I've got an idea that will also allow me to utilize some leftovers from the other night. Last weekend, we hosted a family from the church and I made walking tacos for dinner because it's a kid favorite. It's actually one of my son's favorite meals. It's basically taco fixings, you know, meat, cheese, salsa, pico, or pico or salsa, it doesn't have to be both, uh, sour cream, but instead of putting the fixings in a taco shell or tortillas, you put them in a bag of crushed up Doritos or corn chips. And I have lots of meat left over from that night. So I'm putting some of it, probably about a pound or so of seasoned taco meat into my little crock pot. I just bought this four quart crock pot from Amazon a few weeks back and I'm starting to use it. I really like it. I'll leave it linked in the description box below if you're interested. And I'm also going to add the rest of the homemade pico that I made for that night. And I'm gonna put in just a little bit of salsa, I think, as well. I also purchased refried beans and corn chips because I had intended to make bean dip, and then I ended up not making the bean dip. So I'm gonna add the refried beans to the crock pot here. And we're basically creating like a Southwest style chili so that we can have Frito chili pies. And I figured this will be, you know, a really good way to feed everybody in shifts tonight, like I mentioned, because I can just heat the chili up here in the crock pot, and then everybody can just add Fritos and shredded cheese and sour cream and just fix the meal whenever they are ready to eat it. Future Mindy popping in here as I start a load of laundry in preparation for next week's trip to say thank you to today's sponsor, Earth Breeze. I have been using Earth Breeze for the better part of four months, so I was absolutely delighted when they reached out and said that they wanted to work with me on my channel. Earth Breeze's powerful eco sheets look like dryer sheets, but they're actually detergent that dissolves 100% in hot or cold water and any type of machine. The package is compact, biodegradable, and plastic free. It's vegan, cruelty free, safe for sensitive skin, plus their subscriptions are very flexible. You can adjust them, pause them, or cancel them anytime without any penalty. They're so convinced that you are going to love their detergent that they have a 100% satisfaction guaranteed, meaning if you do not like it, they will give you your money back, no questions asked, and no returns necessary. The biggest question you might have is, does it work? And the answer is yes, yes it does. Not only do I have my own clothes and my husband's clothes in this household, I also have lots of towels and linens, plus three children who get dirty and stinky playing sports outside or in a highly chlorinated pool. So if it did not work, I would not be using it. Go to earthbreeze.com slash cmindymom to get started with 40% off. That's earthbreeze.com slash cmindymom for 40% off your subscription. Earthbreeze also has a buy one, give 10 initiative, meaning for each purchase of Earthbreeze Eco Laundry Sheets, they will donate 10 loads of detergent to a charitable cause. Plus, I love how little space this stuff takes up in my laundry room. No more big jugs of liquid detergent or bulky packages of laundry detergent pods. This little package right here can do up to 60 loads of laundry. I mean, it's laundry detergent. We all need it. So we might as well be using one that not only works, but that has a heart for the planet and for other people. And it takes up so little room in our laundry rooms. So once again, to get started with 40% off, go to earthbreeze.com slash mom or follow the link in the description box. That's 40% off your subscription. And thank you again to Earthbreeze for sponsoring today's video. It is Wednesday and Wednesdays, we typically eat dinner at the church. They're having chicken Alfredo tonight. I cannot wait, yummy, but it's actually still several hours until dinner time, so I'm gonna make a snack. And we seem to always have a lot of yogurt to work our way through. And yogurt often has, you know, a longer life than some other perishable items perhaps in the refrigerator, but still we usually have to make an effort to try to use it up. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna show you what I'm making for a snack and hopefully give you some ideas for the yogurt you may have hanging around in your fridge. What I have here is just some plain Greek yogurt. This is not flavored. What I'm going to use to flavor it is a drink mix packet. I know a lot of people like to use pudding mix or jello mix. I find that this works best because it doesn't change the consistency of the yogurt. It just adds a little flavor. And I only need about half of this package. I don't use the whole one for just one bowl of yogurt. So I'm just going to stir that in. This is a lime flavor, which is one of my favorites. And now I'm just going to add some chopped up apples and a little bit of granola with that for some crunch. 
You could use some chocolate chips or white chocolate chips. I don't have any, so I'm gonna leave them out today. There you go, yum. Mm. Another thing I'm trying with yogurt is freezing it. So earlier today I took some vanilla yogurt that was very close to its best by date and I put it in an ice cube tray and popped it in the freezer. And in a couple of days when the yogurt is frozen, I can pop the cubes out of the ice cube tray and put them in a Ziploc baggie in the freezer and I figure I can use those later on in fruit smoothies. It is Thursday and I am still trying to use up the seasoned ground beef from taco night a few nights ago. Apparently. I way overestimated the number of tacos that my family and our guests would want to eat that night. So I actually took to Instagram earlier. If you're not following me on Instagram, be sure to give me a follow. It's at Mom, especially if you like the more vlog style content because I tend to do just more like day-to-day -day stuff, kind of take you through my day occasionally and uh, put stuff in my stories over there. But I actually put a poll over in my Instagram account asking you guys or my followers over there what I should make for dinner tonight. Taco pizza, taco pasta, or taco sliders. And taco pizza won in a landslide, which is why you hear the bread maker going in the background, if you can hear that. I just put the ingredients in for pizza dough and I just use the recipe from the booklet that came with my bread maker, which I have had for like, maybe 15 years I've had that thing a long time and I usually use it for the purpose of making dough, different doughs for different breads and it does a great job with pizza dough. So I've got that going in the background. I'm gonna jump in the mom shuttle and run some kids to and from various places and then we're gonna come back and I'll figure out what I'm gonna do to make this taco pizza. My pizza dough is ready and I am actually going to grease this cookie sheet. This is a big cookie sheet. And then I'm going to sprinkle some cornmeal over it you don't have to do that you could just use flour you could just grease the cookie sheet i just happen to have cornmeal and it kind of gives it that pizza crust <laughs> uh texture i think it's also easier if i grease my hands a little bit to work with the dough so what i'm going to do is just drop it onto the cookie sheet and i just work with my hands and press it into the cookie sheet i just kind of spread it out across the cookie sheet until it is evenly spread. So it takes a little bit of work, but I think it's just as easy doing it this way as it is trying to use a rolling pin to roll it out. Brick is here helping me and he has decided that we need to make this a stuffed crust pizza. So I have these little cheese sticks here. These are actually cheese sticks that we just sliced up and I'm putting them on the edge of the crust and then I will roll the crust down around the cheese. <laughs> yeah. I suddenly have two extra hands. Whoa! Whoa! Daddy will be happy. He loves stuffed crust pizza. Don't tell him about it. Just say no stuff. <laughs> so instead of pizza sauce, we're going to use another tomato product, which seems called for in a taco pizza, and that is salsa. So I'm going to have my handy dandy helper come here and spread a layer of salsa over the pizza. Now I'm just going to put a layer of shredded cheese. All I have left is cheddar. So that's what we're going to use. Pepper Jack would have been really good. And then I'm going to sprinkle the taco meat over the top. You could do beans on this. I thought about doing corn, like some, you know, just canned corn or something that's been drained, but I'm going to keep it really simple tonight. I would probably like black beans on mine, but the kids don't love black beans, so I'm just gonna leave that off. To go along with this, a salad would have been great, but I'm out of salad greens. But I do have lots of other fresh veggies. In fact, I did restock some of my fruits and vegetables at the beginning of this week. So I just did a veggie tray. I do this a lot of nights when I don't have another vegetable that I plan to make along with the dinner. My kids are really good about eating fresh vegetables like carrots and cucumbers and bell peppers and even broccoli. So I just chopped some of that up and put it out with a little dressing or dip or something like that and people can snack on it while I'm finishing making the dinner or they can have it along with the dinner. You know, it doesn't have to get fancy when it comes to the vegetables, as long as I offer one at dinner time and everybody eats a little bit of something or a lot of something, depending on the vegetable, then I'm fine with it. I was talking in my Instagram stories the other day about filming this video and the predicament I was in that made me change my mind about 
uh, what video I was filming this week. And my friend Maria from Meals with Maria messaged me and said she is in the same boat. <laughs> she was filming the same type of video. So hers is already posted, I think, by the time you see this. So I'll leave it linked in the description box below in case you want some more clean out the fridge inspiration. Good morning. It is Friday and it is actually the first day of spring break for my children. So I'm trying to be quiet so as not to wake anybody. Everybody's sleeping in. I made myself some coffee this morning and I have been using this um, Califia Farms pumpkin spice oat milk, the barista blend. This makes fantastic lattes. Um, it froths and heats really, really well. And I've had this one in my refrigerator unopened for several months. The best buy date is in April, so I still had some time, but once you open it, as I did the other day, then you have to use it within a few days, really just, you know, to get the best out of it. And I treated myself a few weeks back to a mocha pot. And I have seen these as low as like 10 bucks on Amazon, but I actually splurged on the Bialetti brand of Mocha Pot. It cost me about $35 for the small one. So over the course of, you know, making 10 or 12 nice espressos or coffees with that, it will definitely pay for itself compared to what I would pay at a coffee shop. It's not super difficult to use. I did have to try a couple times to get it just right and watch some tutorials, but basically I just put hot water in the bottom. I put some coffee in the little filter and then put that in the bottom, put the lid on and then put it on the stove over low heat and eventually the coffee kind of percolates up through the little device and it makes really strong espresso shots or coffee that you can then add milk to or hot water if you wanted to make like an Americano style coffee. I also I also have a little milk frother and every time I think I'm going to get rid of it I end up using it again <laughs> and it's not super big it's not hard to store up in my coffee cabinet so I just put the oat milk in there and it heats it and froths it and I put everything together and it makes a really really delicious latte. I will leave those two things I talked about the Bialetti mocha pot and the little frother that I have if it's still available on Amazon down in the description box below but I'm going to sip on this and we're going to get some work done and then I'm going to figure out how to use up more stuff in my refrigerator and my pantry before we leave town for spring break. I am just raiding the fridge for all of the random leftovers from the past couple of days. We still have some taco pizza from last night, plus a couple of pieces of Mazio's pizza that my daughter brought home from Student Ministries. I have some leftover fish and chips from my lunch yesterday. I went out to lunch with my sister and my mom. And I also have some of this pasta casserole. This was a viral TikTok recipe. It's called Alfredo Spaghetti. And I actually made this for a friend, for a neighbor, but I had so much of it that I couldn't fit it in the casserole dish that I was taking over to her. So I had to um, just put some in a side dish for us to have later. And then I think I will probably just roast some veggies in the oven maybe to go along with that. And that'll be dinner tonight. Just kind of cleaning up the leftovers from the past few days. It is Saturday and we are getting ready to leave town for spring break tomorrow. By, by the time you see this, we'll be back. But I already made seven up biscuits this morning. I've made these several times on my channel. It's just four ingredients, seven up, butter, sour cream, and bisquick. And I had a little bit of bisquick left in that box that I really wanted to use up and sour cream in the fridge that I used up. So um, was able to get rid of those two things. And now I think I'm going to attempt some snacks for the trip. I'm thinking about doing some cookies because I am always trying to use up oatmeal. I always have, it seems like I always have a lot of oatmeal on hand because I buy it for lots of different videos. So I think I'm going to whip up some oatmeal cookies, but instead of using raisins, I'm going to use cranberries. Do you think that'll work? Because I don't have any raisins, but I've had these sweet and dried cranberries open in the pantry, I think since Christmas. So it's been almost three months. I really need to use them up. And I feel like those should go in oatmeal cookies. I don't have any white chocolate chips. That would be really good. But I'm gonna whip some of those up. I am just going to use the basic like oatmeal raisin cookie recipe and we'll see how these turn out. So I have this package of bacon that I really need to use. And if food waste is sad 
and it is, then bacon waste is just a tragedy. So I'm actually just going to pop this onto a foil lined cookie sheet and bake it all up in the oven. And I'm going to use it to make some turkey and bacon subs. I, I had some sub rolls that I needed to use that were in the freezer. And I'm just going to put those out on a platter with whatever fruits and vegetables and maybe crackers or snacky things I could scrounge from the pantry and the fridge. And that will be our dinner tonight. Okay, tell me this doesn't look a lot better. If the goal is to clean out the fridge before we head out of town on vacation for spring break. We'll be ready to restock this when we get back. I didn't have to throw out very much. We used what we had and looking a lot better. <laughs> Thank you again to Earth Breeze for sponsoring today's video. For 40% off your Earth Breeze subscription, check out the link in the description box below. Pick out one of these videos to watch next and I'll see you there.